Well, this morning, officials with Homeland Security confirming to us that a man suspected of multiple murders and caught in Tulsa last Saturday is headed back to Maryland. That is where the suspect, Victor Antonio Martinez Hernandez, is charged with first degree murder and first degree rape. Rachel Morin, mother of five, 37 years young, life snuffed out way, way too soon. Nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves to be raped and murdered. She was raped and murdered by an illegal that was that was able to come into this country unvetted and unchallenged. And that's what gets that's what gets me mad. That's what gets my blood boiling. Because this shit could be could be avoided. I cannot hold back the truth. And the truth is is that we're all in danger because of these broken policies these broken laws that need to be fixed floodgates were open for long enough where it's the damage is done but let's let's shore it up let's make some changes it ain't working that's for sure a nationwide search for Hernandez ended last weekend when at a Tulsa sports bar, the 23 year old murder suspect ran into Tulsa police. But now he's being sent back to Maryland and where he allegedly committed one of those crimes. Let's take a look at these photos from Homeland Security uh, just within the past hour of them handcuffing Hernandez inside the Tulsa County Jail before flying him out to the East Coast. However, his alleged crimes, they span both coast. Our investigators have been in communication with theirs. They are aware that we identified the suspect here and by identifying our suspect, we have their suspect, they have their suspect and they can move forward on charges. They would also file um, an arrest warrant on file. So, you know, I never want him to leave Maryland again. I want him to die in a Maryland jail, Maryland prison Amen. system. Um, we don't have the death penalty. So I, I just hope he spends the rest of his days there. Police were told he was arrested at a bar last night and that when he was initially arrested, police say that he tried to lie to them about who he was and the crimes he that he's accused of. Hartford County deputies are on their way to Tulsa right now to try to get Martinez Hernandez back here to Maryland. He lied to authorities. That's not shocking. Most criminals lie to the police and he was trying to evade the police and he was apprehended in a public place in a sports bar. In a sports bar, ladies and gentlemen. So El Salvador can get him back in a body bag. He, they can have him back when he dies. Like I said in the beginning of this live stream, uh, and this sheriff says it well. Let him die in a prison, in a, in, a, in a state prison in the state of Maryland where he committed that heinous crime, and let that be a message to any and all that are out there that want to commit these types of crimes. I only wish that. Rachel Morin lived in the state of Florida because he'd be looking at the death penalty. So uh, when you commit a crime, when you commit the crime of murder and then you have a additional charge, that would be the rape. You That constitutes the death penalty. So he'd be seeing Mr. Sparky down in Florida or even in Texas as well. So he would go back there to face those charges. But there was a couple of things during his press conference and one of them was surprising to me that we heard the sheriff, Sheriff Jeff Gaylor, he called out 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Did anybody catch on to that? Did that slip over anyone's head? I don't think so. I think we have a bunch of true crime enthusiasts that catch on to these things. But he called out 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And I want to take a listen to that again and watch it with you guys. But he called upon politicians to look at this reform and to address the open border situation that they have going on. Too many of our citizens in the United States are becoming murder victims. Of so many illegals that are crossing into and flooding into our our great country, United States. And something has to has something has to give here. We have a, a, a problem here in the United States. We have a problem with illegals coming across the border and not coming across to make a better life for themselves and not doing it the, the legal way and the right way. They're coming in here and they're murdering our innocent citizens. It's an it's not a good it's not a good look. It's not a good look, ladies and gentlemen. This is a savage who shouldn't be here in this country. And the reason he's here is because of the current political climate that's allowing this to happen. It you know, was this was Rachel's homicide random or targeted? And again, I don't know that we have that answer um, 
explicitly or completely. Um, but at this point, there's nothing to indicate that anyone other than him was involved. Um, we do have some belief that he spent some time here in the Bel Air area. So he may have seen her and her. We heard early on in this investigation that he stalked her online or was looking at her online social media profiles. Went from California straight, straight clear across the United States. In March of 2023, investigators say he assaulted a nine-year-old girl and her mother at a home in Los Angeles. Victor Hernandez did not come here to make a better life for himself or for his family. He came here to escape the crime he committed in El Salvador. He came here and murdered Rachel and God willing, no one else. They told Rachel Morin's family, hey, we got this. We know the guy. We already ident we've identified the guy. You just got to keep it quiet. They knew who he was through the investigative genetic genealogy and had him identified Victor Martinez Hernandez, but they just didn't know where the F he was. Police were just scurrying to try to locate him. So they had FBI on the ground. They had local, state, federal. Everybody was looking for this guy. They just didn't know where the hell he was. Bad boys, bad boys. More serious, uh, the, the loss of life, he, you know, uh, California um, will follow up on their investigation. They would have to direct questions to that uh, police, it's LAPD um, that is handling that for, as far as specifics to their investigation. Um, but certainly we have been in communication. Our investigators have been in communication with theirs. They are aware that we identified the suspect here and by identifying our suspect, we have their suspect, they have their suspect, and they can move forward on charges. They would also file, uh, the arrest weren't on file. So, it, you know, I never want him to leave Maryland again. I want him to die in a Maryland jail, Maryland prison Amen. system. Amen. Some emotional words from the mother of Rachel Morin after police have arrested a suspect in connection to the murder of her daughter. The sheriff says Martinez Hernandez has ties to gangs. Investigators are checking to see if he's connected to any other crimes. Rachel's emotional mother spoke at a news conference held Saturday afternoon about the arrest. She credits law enforcement for finally catching the suspect. So kudos to the Tulsa Police Department. I want to just say this. Listen. As those of you who know me, I usually don't get this fired up, but, um, and, and to all the political comments in the chat, I don't even go there because yes, lawmakers make our laws and it's politicians that make the laws and that they agree to these laws and so forth. At one point, um, when things seemed like really bleak and hopeless, the lead detective said to me, he said, patience will win in the end patience the sheriff was referring to is the long arm of the law and the multiple agencies that are involved in this type of investigation uh, no genetic genealogy or investigative genetic genealogy in some of the cold cases and, and certainly has gotten a lot of attention um, i think folks should also know that we prioritize the violent crime cases that are that are current and that um this is an invest game changing investigative tool. We can apply the investigative genealogy to identify potentially family members. And then in doing that, uh, taking up partners can conduct uh, interviews to better understand who the uh, potential subjects are and narrow down that scope. Politicians from both sides of the aisle that are f effing up and that are costing honest innocent law-abiding citizens their lives because they have protection of their own they, their their families and themselves are not affected by this we are 